good friend of mine, and he's been a frequent contributor to our webinars, Matt Buckley. Matt is a former decorated Navy fighter pilot turned options trader who helped run one of the largest Wall Street options trading firms in the world and is now the CEO and founder of Top Gun Options. In today's presentation, Matt's going to talk about trading the Death Star, why diversifying your investments may be a mistake, and the risk and benefits of trading a solo stock and the laser focused strategies that he uses for maximizing his profits. And with that, I'd like to welcome Matt to the room. Matt, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm great, Raleigh. How are you, my friend? I'm doing just awesome, buddy. Nice to see you here. Amen. Yeah, good to, good to be seen. How are you? Good to see you as well. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're having a great day, Matt. We've just passed lunch. Everybody's had a little food, a little drink, and they're ready to learn. <laughs> Good. Well, I'll, I'll keep everybody from falling into the food coma then. <laughs> you go. You, you're the man that can do it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you got it. Uh, okay, you guys want me to stop uh, at the top of the hour? Yeah. That would okay. be great, but you take, we ran about five minutes late, Matt, so we don't want to compress what you've got to say, but you know, you've got an hour, buddy. Perfect. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen here and we will get airborne folks. All right. Uh, just a quick reminder to pay the, uh, the attorneys because they're not cheap. Uh, not a licensed uh, registered investment advisor, broker dealer. We're going to talk about some options uh, today. They involve risk. Make sure you talk to one of those, uh, those folks a hell of a lot smarter than me before you place any trade. And that Top Gun Options, we recommend when you're in a training program uh, to trade in a paper trading account before you put any capital uh, at risk. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome aboard Trading the Death Star, we call this. And I apologize for that. I'm not uh, getting shot at. There's a construction worker outside my door, and I'm going to text my significant other to make him stop. Thank you. Jesus, sounds like he was coming through the wall. Uh, trading the Death Star. Now, if you have kids like I do, or you're a little older like I am, you actually remember the whole Star Wars Man, I was going to say trilogy, but it's not even a trilogy. It's a, it's, what's a sixth, how do you label a sixth thing, right? <laughs> so uh, the Death Star, built to take over the universe. It kind of got blown up, but they rebuilt it, and it really, really, really took over the universe. So the stock we're going to talk about today is actually the stock that I call the Death Star. Real quick, in my personal accounts, uh, I'm long Amazon synthetic uh, covered call. I have a Microsoft cover call, <clears throat> doing a little... Uh, Bitcoin exploration with a stock called Mara, long JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley going into financial earnings, short Amazon and Apple weekly bear call spreads. And then I just put on a uh, S&P 500 bear call spread before I jumped on the air as Janet and uh, Jerome are testifying in front of the, uh, the house. So those are in my personal accounts. Okay. As Raleigh said, former Navy F-18 uh, fighter pilot. So we're going to start with a little bit of a military theme and a fighter uh, aviation theme. Two choices, choice A and choice B. Here's your first choice. Which fighter aircraft would you rather fly? I want you to stare at that picture and kind of take it all in. Would you rather fly this? This uh, aircraft right here is the F-4 Phantom. Just a beautiful aircraft sitting on the ground, but a lot going on. Take a look at that cockpit, folks. Over 300 switches and dials in that cockpit. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. The pilot would have to spend a lot of what we call heads down time looking at all of that stuff instead of eyes out of the cockpit looking for enemy MiGs, surface air missiles, or AAA, anti-aircraft artillery. This aircraft was so labor intensive, they actually threw another dude in the back seat solely whose sole purpose was to run the radar called a RIO, a radar intercept officer. Two folks in this airplane, very labor intensive, a lot going on. Would you rather fly this or that? Folks, that is the F-35 cockpit, the Joint Strike Fighter, the newest, hottest aircraft on the face of the planet. It is called the Lightning II. And folks, do you see any steam gauge? We call them steam gauges. Do you see any steam gauges in that cockpit? Not one. Two flat panel displays in this aircraft. We call it the Wonder Woman jet. Invisible to radar. Matter of fact, if you've seen an F-35 pilot's helmet, everything is displayed on the helmet. Matter of fact, there's so many sensors around the airplane. When they look down, they don't see their legs or the cockpit. They see through the uh, cockpit and the ground. They see threats. 
identified by the aircraft. The aircraft is so smart that it actually limits the amount of information that it tells the pilot at different portions of the flight to reduce pilot workload. Incredibly brilliant airplane. So obviously you don't have to write in the chat box which aircraft you'd rather fly. It's the F-35 Lightning. We're gonna tie this into trading and it's gonna to make total sense to you. Ladies and gentlemen, by the end of uh, my brief, I'm gonna give you a quick how goes it with what's going on uh, in the market today. Uh, when you have the Treasury Secretary and the Federal Reserve Chairman uh, talking, the market usually listens. So we have to, uh, I'll give you a quick brief on what they're talking about. The only stock you need to own, and that's gonna be shocking to a lot of you because you've been programmed and I'm gonna deprogram you today. And a good substitute to trade if you don't like the stock or it's a little pricey for whatever reason, I got a good substitute for you as well. So make sure you silence uh, your electronic nicotine, no distractions. Let's go ahead uh, and get airborne because you've never heard what I'm about to tell you, okay? Matthew Buckley, Wiz, F-18 Hornet pilot, graduated from Top Gun, the Navy Fighter Weapons School. I was a bad guy, I was a good bad guy. There you go, I was an adversary pilot and also flew some combat sorties over Iraq. What's this have to do with trading? Absolutely everything. When I was a young fighter pilot, I applied everything I was learning to my trading, to my investing, having a strategy, implementing tactics, contingency planning, knowing when to get out of a good or bad situation before it got even worse, right? And it worked incredibly well. Eventually, uh, I popped up on the radar of one of the largest volatility options trading firms in the world headquartered right there at the intersection of Jackson and LaSalle in the Chicago Board of Trade. Had an absolute blast uh, when I was there. I helped build a hedge fund. I helped build the uh, retail brokerage uh, options house, which got eaten, who, by E-Trade? Yeah, I mean, it's all a big shell game with the brokers. Uh, helped build options house, and I was the managing director of strategy at this firm. During my spare time, I built the options news network, ONN.TV. We were uh, essentially the CNBC for options. I, you know, I know John and Pete from my time in, uh, in Chicago, and you know, they do, they, they try and pay lip service to options as much as they can on CNBC, but we were it 24 seven, had a blast doing that. To be honest with you, no offense to anybody from Chicago, you can keep it. I'm a beach guy, I'm a Navy guy. I'm down here in God's waiting room in Boca Raton, Florida. After this, I'm going to the beach. So love Chicago, but nine months out of the year was miserable. So I moved down to Florida uh, 11 years ago and started Top Gun Options to put their ladder down to help retail traders such as, your, uh, as yourself, because I was you, man. I was you and, and what happened to me? I was like Eddie Murphy in Trading Places. Uh, went from kind of being that lowly retail trader to the other side of the fence, uh, uh, you know, with a multi-billion dollar uh, Wall Street firm. Had an absolute blast, but now it's time to get airborne and do my own thing. I also work, do a lot of charity work down here in South Florida for the Broward Sheriff's Advisory Council. Uh, fortunately, I lost a sister to a drunk driver when she was a freshman at Villanova University. So I am deeply involved in MAD. And then in the past year, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, I started my own foundation called the Top Gun Fighter Foundation to try and help prevent veteran suicide. I had three very good friends, uh, one who was in my wedding, uh, who are no longer with us. We've, uh, we've lost more veterans due to suicide um, than, since 2008 than we did overseas in combat, which is insanity. One veteran uh, an hour kills themselves. It's just an absolute disgrace. During the hour we're speaking, a veteran will die. And I'm going to try and fight that. Okay, let's get airborne on to bigger and better things. Folks, since day one of investing, you've been programmed certain things, right? You've, and I'm going to deprogram them. So this is going to be shocking, or maybe it's not shocking to you, but Wall Street, ladies and gentlemen, is lying to you, right? How many of you have heard this? You can't put all your eggs in one basket, right? You can't. You have got to diversify. You must diversify. Diversification is important, blah, 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 blah. Why did they tell you to diversify? Or who told you to diversify? That dude. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever you hear the word broker, whether it's real estate, yacht, airplane, you name it, Delete the word broker and put in the word commission. Anybody ever seen the movie Boiler Room, Wall Street, uh, Wolf of Wall Street, all that, that type of stuff? They wanted to, they want to churn your accounts. Why? Cha-ching, cha-ching, commission. 
back in the day, the guy would open the door and say, all right, fellas, open the phone books and call all our clients and get them into this stock today. Well, sir, we told them to get into this stock yesterday. Get them out of that stock, get them into this one because of what? Commissions, right? Commissions, commissions, commissions. Now, Robinhood, no commissions here. If you're not paying anything, folks, you ain't the customer, you're the product. That whole payment forwarder thing that blew up about a month, a month and a half ago, <laughs> keep your eye on that. Wall Street, oh, if we're not going to make commissions anymore, how else are we going to make money? We're going to sell their order flow. We're going to sell the retail traders order flow. We could talk about this over a steak and a bottle of wine. It's a disgrace. But anyway, folks, this is why you were told to do this, to diversify was so they can make money. It might not have been in your best interest. I'm going to say it bluntly, and then I'm going to clean it up with somebody smarter than me. Let me say it bluntly. Diversification is for idiots. It's for people who don't know what they're doing. Now, let me clean that up and, and be a little nicer. Warren Buffett, diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. The guy knows what he's talking about. This ain't his first rodeo. Ladies and gentlemen, the only stock you need to own for the rest of your life is Amazon. You want to talk about diversification? It's massive, and we'll get into it in a couple of minutes. But you do not need to do anything else in your portfolio but put this in it. I'm a pictures guy. Take a look at this. I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I've been doing this 1991, I remember writing a check at Naval Air Station, Key West, Florida, to the USAA Aggressive Growth Mutual Fund for like 25 bucks. And that was a lot of money for me. I've been this, I've never seen in the 30 years I've been trading and investing this. Math, Amazon defies math, folks. Did you see their last, earn, the Q4 earnings? They're, they make like $100,000 a, a second or whatever it is. It's insanity. Amazon's annual revenue continues to grow at 30% a year. And we all know during the pandemic, small businesses got destroyed and Amazon cleaned up. They cemented their position. Take a look at their annual revenue by segment. I remember years ago when AWS, Amazon Web Services, was an idea. Now it's essentially half of Microsoft. Look at, look at its profit growth international North America. You know, it's not pictured on the slide. And I just read a good article over the weekend in the Wall Street Journal about is advertising revenue. They are rapidly approaching Facebook and someday may even you ready for this eclipse Google. They literally are the Death Star folks and they take over everything that they touch. Look at the Prime Day, folks, it's almost turned into a national holiday. You know when something becomes an adjective or an adjective, right? Even if you're going to the post office to send somebody something overnight or UPS, what do you say? You say, oh, I'll FedEx it to you. It's easier. Amazon Prime Day has entered into the lexicon like people put it on their calendars. Look at the revenue in their Prime Days, folks. Now, let's talk through something interesting. Let me, let me grab a little pen here. If you had taken Wiz 10 years ago, Wiz, and showed me this chart and said, would you invest in this company? I would have laughed you out of the board of trade. Sales, okay, they're fantastic. Free cash flow, okay, not too shit. Profit. If you showed me this chart and deleted the, the company, actually 10 years ago, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have been like, are you insane? And then I'd go, wait a minute, this is Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has actually told shareholders, first of all, you'll never get a dividend back. Why am I giving, quote, money to shareholders when I can take that money, buy a competitor, put a competitor out of business, innovate, put satellites into space? The man has said he wants to cross the finish line almost every quarter with, a, with not even a penny to his name. He wants to do stuff with his money. That's why the profit is down there, folks. Again, get rid of, I, literally in the middle of the, I have a huge had, it is still a huge bookcase, but it, I had like 30 or so investing books. 
I threw them all out in the middle of the pandemic when Jerome Powell jumped in with his financial nukes. This is not your mother and father stock market. You have got to be present and look at what's going on. But look at that. Barely any profit, and it's a $3,000 stock. But it makes sense, okay? Now, I'm not going to rip through these testimonials, uh, case studies of people who are currently here printing money on Amazon since we started a little late. Trust me. Now, before I blow sunshine lollipops and unicorns all over the place, we got to talk about the threats. What are the potential risks to just staying in one name? Anybody ever hear of a company called Lehman Brothers? How about this one? Bear Stearns? Jim Cramer knows Bear Stearns. Remember, he looked like Khrushchev at the UN, like the bald dude slamming his shoe on the table. Remember him at the height of the financial crisis? You're an idiot if you don't get into Bear Stearns. Bear Stearns is safe at $70. Come on now. Two days later, it was at zero. Pets.com. Enron. Folks, I could take the rest of our time here and go through the graveyard of stocks that have gone to zero. They can. Ever Have you noticed a common theme between Enron, Pets.com, and Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns? These are random examples, but here's the common theme. They didn't own anything. Enron was a middleman of electricity. Hell, they didn't, they didn't even own the building they were in. Pets.com owned a stinky sock puppet and a URL. Lehman Brothers Bear Stearns didn't own a thing. They owned paper. Look at the guys taking the damn sign away. Like, you don't even own that. Stocks can go to zero. Can Amazon go to zero? Yes, but it's physically impossible. Why? It owns stuff. Full disclosure, I flew, I got off active duty in the Navy in 2000, uh, went to FedEx and was miserable. After 10 months of flying for FedEx, I left. I could not go to work at midnight and fly till eight in the morning. But why do I bring this up? Because I still have have buddies there that are very senior and in corporate. I got a call like, when was it? Seven years ago? I forget. Whatever years ago, fill in the blank. Hey, man, I just heard from a buddy at GE aircraft leasing that Jeff Bezos just leased five Airbus or whatever it was. I'm like, he's going to do it. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, he's going to, dude, you're in trouble. He's going to build his own FedEx. Amazon Air is massive. I see more blue trucks outside of my door on the street than a brown or a white FedEx van. Amazon owns things. I did consulting for about a year down outside of Miami International Airport at an Amazon fulfillment center. It was bigger than an aircraft carrier. So can Amazon go to zero? Yeah, but it can't because it physically has stuff, okay? But that's a risk. Amazon can go to zero, period. What are some other risks? This dude's gone, but I'm putting him up on the screen because of what? Political. In the four years of Donald Trump, twice, the dude woke up or didn't go to bed, depends on who you believe, grabbed his phone and went crazy. Jeff Bezos, Amazon's a monopoly. Jeff Bezos is destroying the post office, mailing all his packages on the cheap. Jeff Be he took a flamethrower to Amazon and Jeff Bezos. What happened? Blip and then higher. The initial one, like, the year into his presidency, even I was like, holy crap, he, he's going after him. He didn't do anything and he couldn't do anything. However, these type of headlines, folks, aren't um, endearing. <laughs> the DOJ to open a criminal probe and, <laughs> excuse me, uh, union uh, down in uh, Alabama, antitrust, uh, all sorts of stuff. Now, let me be clear about Amazon because you might be sitting there like, oh, well, it's, it, they're going to break it up. It's too late. It's like mercury on your table. It's if you broke up Amazon, the parts would create seven monopolies. AWS competes with Microsoft, Amazon Air, FedEx and UPS. Um, oh, it's eight months ago, nine months ago. I remember a little little news snippet that said Amazon just trademarked Amazon Pharmacy. I predicted on that day that Walgreens and CVS will go out of business eventually. You will get a text on your phone that says your medication is here. You'll go answer the door and a little drone is going to scan your face and drop your medication in your hand. Everything is coming to Amazon Pharma. And then him and Elon Musk are in a space race. This is uh, you ever watch what was it, the History Channel or whatever, Discovery, the men who build America, Ford, Carnegie, Vanderbilt. 
Tesla or Musk and and Bezos, man, they're they're racing to put like a thousand, couple thousand satellites in low orbit to give everybody free. This is insane. So what am I getting at? There is potential government action, but if you're old like me, you know that Microsoft. Uh, how about let's go older? Standard Oil. Anybody remember AT and T? Anytime Uncle Sam gets involved and goes. We're going to take a look at maybe you're too big. It takes years, five, 10, uh, what was the one, 12? It took 12 years to even come to an opinion. And last time I checked, Jeff Bezos isn't hurting for money. He probably has more attorneys than there are people in this country to fight stuff like this. So I'd be failing in my job if I didn't point out potential threats, but we've negated almost every one uh, of those threats. Now, I like to tell people at Topkin Options, all of my members, uh, that I wear two suits. I'll, I'll tell you how I feel in my flight suit. I think Amazon is awful. They pay their workers crap. At the height of the COVID pandemic, he was working those people like crazy. They didn't even have PPE or masks. He's the richest man on the face of the planet. And he, he's so tight, he squeaks when he walks. So I'll tell you how I feel as American. And then I'm going to throw on my $10,000 Armani suit and become Gordon Gecko and go, I don't care. Hey, 5,000 people who want to unionize in Alabama, you're all fired. I mean, so I'm kidding. But what I get at is like, you know, sometimes you have to have, um, I call them a hold your nose trade. Sometimes with Amazon, it's a hold your nose trade. Um, but we'll see. So I jokingly say that I wear two suits, but my job is to teach you how to potentially uh, make money. Now that we talked about the risks of trading just one name, let's talk about the benefits. Folks, you trade the same name and potentially profit no matter what direction Amazon moves, up, down, or sideways. As an options trader, we want movement. I don't care what it's doing, up, down, or sideways, as long as it moves, right? You stay focused on the news and events that impact Amazon instead of a ton of different stocks and ETFs. Folks, you become an expert in Amazon, reducing time spent on other positions. Folks, I have a buddy who's a uh, an Apple, he's a market maker in Apple. He doesn't even know that the stock market exists. And I'm not joking when I say that. I talk about the VIX or this, or he's like, what are you talking about? I eat, breathe, sleep Apple. I don't care about anything else but Apple. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one of my my friends down here in Boca under the bus. He's a plastic cert plastic surgeon, so obviously here in Boca Raton he uh, stays pretty busy. Uh, Wiz, I need some help, man. I no, I didn't go to see him. Uh, come on now. Um, I went to see him. We actually went to Starbucks. He booted up his computer and he said, "Dude, I need help. I, I you know your 500 pound head in trading. Help me." I'm like, "You got it, Doc." I'll never forget as he turned the laptop around to face me when I looked at his brokerage platform. Thank God he's a doctor. I fell and I hit my head. I died. I almost died. You ready for this? He had 33 positions in his portfolio. The dude was flying an F4. I do this for a living, and I just showed you my positions on uh, at the beginning of my brief. And that's a little too much for me. And I do this 24 seven. Usually right around now in the chat box, I start seeing people like, uh oh, he's talking to me. Folks, if, you have, if you're a regular retail trader and you have more than five positions, it's too many. I'm telling you, when the research department at my firm in, uh, in Chicago had like 23 analysts and their job was to cover like one or two names and they had to know everything about that company and what was going on. You know how many times they got stuff wrong? What chance do you have, folks, if you got like 20, 30 different positions, right? So, and, and he tried, I'm like, Doc, what? because I couldn't speak. I'm like, I, I was getting agita looking at his positions. He's like, well, I think this is a, it's a surgical, I don't know, one of my doctor buddies put me into that. I don't know why I'm in that one. This one, I think it's a pot stock. Uh, okay, this one, I'm like, Doc, stop talking. I'm like, enough. You have got to minimize uh, all of this. So, yeah, guys, I apologize for the saw. I just, they came in, I'm like, stop with the sawing. Hold on one second. 
sorry about that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. I will have them. There we go. Perfect. There we go. All right. So here's what I'm getting at, guys. Please, if you are um, a retail trader, please, please, please limit the amount of positions. And I'm telling you, with just Amazon, folks, you have that diversification. Okay. This is what your trading cockpit needs to look at. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're still sitting here going, you know what, man, this makes sense. I got 17 names in my portfolio. I'm not an expert in any of them. And I'm just kind of flying. I'm flying that F4. Simplify and jump in your F35. If you're still sitting there going, Wiz, I'm hardwired. It does not compute. Must diversify. They got me. They, they, the Wall Street guys vampired me. I have to diversify. Guess what? I'm going to teach you at Topkin Options that we are going to diversify. Use a here's your substitute for Amazon. Amazon ain't cheap. It's a three thousand dollars stock. We also in this service that I'm going to tell you, tell you about right now, we trade XLY, which is an ETF. It's the consumer discretionary ETF. You ready for this? What's the number one holding? Twenty three percent Amazon. So this is a fantastic substitute to trade. You know, it, I call it the cocktail sauce. Shrimp are simply a vehicle for eating cocktail sauce, right? So XLY is our cocktail sauce for our Amazon trip. But check this out if you're really hardwired to diversification. Look at some of the other names. Tesla, Home Depot, Mickey D's, Nike, Starbucks, Lowe's, Target, Booking, TJX. Ladies and gentlemen, there is your does not compute, must diversify whiz, right? So... How do we target Amazon and XLY for max profit? Well, this is easy. Every Monday at two o'clock is when we do our solo Amazon brief. I, the service is called solo uh, Amazon because guess what? That's all we trade along with XLY. I'm going to teach you to establish what we call a base position, a beachhead for all my Marines in the audience. We're gonna hop in that joint strike fighter fly this, I wish you could fly the speed of light, fly the speed of light out into the future with options, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you my brokerage account in a second. SPX is selling off nicely here. Um, we could fly all the way out into the future and get bullish on Amazon, okay? We can go out to, I believe it's January of 2023 and get bullish. And the two tactics that I'll teach you, one is called synthetic stock, and one is called a long call diagonal. Now, <clears throat> look into the parentheses, protective puts. Ladies and gentlemen, at the top of that slide is an F-18 Hornet. I never walked out to my F-18 Hornet to go flying and looked at the chief and said, hey, chief, pull the ejection seat out of the jet. Give me an extra 800 pounds of gas. I'm, I'm, I'm awesome today and I'm not gonna die. Even I'm not that type A folks, of course not. Everything we do at Topkin Options, I'm going to teach you to have an ejection seat and be hedged and protected. You sleep better at night with Topkin Options. So after we fly out into the future and establish a base position, what do we do next? We trade the front months. What are the front months, Wiz? You're sitting in a front month. <laughs> you know, what, March, April, May. So we have a long-term bullish position established out into the future. And then we trade the heck out of the front months and make some money. If Amazon or XLY are going up, we'll do some bullish spreads or buy some calls. What if it's going down? We'll do some bearish spreads and sell front month calls. If it's moving sideways, we can do a tactic known as an iron condor, right? It's a range bound trade. Iron condor means it's staying in a range. So as I said, being an options trader, the market can go up, down, or sideways. Doesn't matter to us. We just like the movement, okay? Now, let me pull up my brokerage platform and actually show you what's going on. Okay, so, and this, let me pull up the S&P 500 because this is interesting market action today. Check this out. Look at this. So Janet, so I can tell you, I know for a fact that their comments leaked today and then 
that's when they started testifying and now we're kind of going down here. Let me just, I just wanted to see that real quick. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you though. The, um, let's take a look at Amazon and let's bring up the options chain. And, hold on one second, let me close all this stuff. Okay, so as I briefed, look at the top. This is uh, all the options contracts. You can go all the way out to look at this, Jan of 2023. Is that in this portfolio? No, it isn't. Let me log out. Hang on one second here. Ba, ba, ba. All right, so I'm going to, oops, hold on one second, guys. Let me screen share back to that and open my other brokerage account because I want to show you my Amazon position, okay? All right, E-Trade, let me open my, the one that's got my Amazon in it. How do I log off of this one? There we go. Got to move this control panel because I actually have a, it's this portfolio, I have a synthetic stock out all the way out to January of 2023. So let me take a look at it right here. And this is my this is my live account. What am I? How am I doing today? Down two grand. This is a live account. Uh, and let me show you my Amazon position. Right here. So here you go. Actually, I have a, a couple trades on. So if you can see it in here, or actually, let me bring up my order. So yesterday, I let me clear these out. Filled. I actually have a bear call spread on Amazon. So I'm trading the front month. Right here it is. Right here. Let me click copy. So I have a bear call spread. I have the 3170, 3175. Now Amazon's seeing a massive pop today, which is actually good news, but I'm going to hold that bear call spread. Let's take a look at, here's the synthetic. It looks a little, here's the spread in here, but you, you can see right here, it says January of 2023. Hey, Max, excuse me, just for a second. Yeah. We're, we're still seeing sort of your statement, I think. Oh, okay. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Where's my screen share? New share screen. How about now? There you go. There okay, you go, good. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so here we go. Amazon, look at that pop today, 57 bucks. Let's bring up the chart. Good move. Apparently, Janet or uh, Jerome has said something nice, uh, and the market reacted favorably, at least the tech stocks. Let's go. Uh, let me take a look real quick at uh, like a Morgan Stanley or JP Morgan, how the financials doing. So that's interesting. You see how tech is doing very good today? How's JP Morgan doing? Yeah, mid-level. All right, but let's get back to Amazon and XLY. So this is a live account. Here are all my Amazon positions. And down here I have what? XLY. This is also synthetic stock all the way out to look at this, January of 2023. So I'm going to teach you how to do this, how to fly out in time, build along, and then trade the front months. Now I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of a brief detour from my Amazon talk here and tell you, because uh, I said this yesterday, this was a big, 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 big change for me at Top Gun Options. And you guys are hearing it second because my members heard it uh, first. Um, I am predicting, and I'm, you know, I, I am, I'm Eeyore, right? I'm an options trader. I'm a fighter pilot. I am taught to look at everything bad, right? How am I going to get shot down? How much money can I lose in this trade? Plan on it happening. Why? So when it doesn't happen, I'm actually pleasantly surprised and happy. I didn't get shot down. That's great. People who are like, I'm going to print money or I'm the best fighter pilot in the world end up getting shot down or losing money. But I'm going to tell you right now, so I'm usually Eeyore, but now I'm going to get really, really Eeyore. Um, I don't care what your politics are, never in the history of this republic or stock markets in the United States have we seen, I, I get what Jerome's saying, I'm going to keep interest rates low until the cows come home. Well, what if inflation starts running hot? We're going to deal with it. But we got 20 million Americans out of work. So the man is he's 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 doing what I do, trying to land single engine uh, aboard an aircraft carrier at night in bad weather in the middle of the Pacific with a pitching deck. The dude has to nail this perfectly. I don't think he will. The Fed has never engineered what they call a soft landing. He's not going to do it. Inflation is increasing. How many people in this room have noticed your gas prices from November until now or the price of milk or whatever? Inflation's going up. 
Jerome Powell is going to have to raise interest rates. One of the, I think it was the Dallas Fed chief this morning on CBC said what? I think we need to do it next year. Whoa, that's why the futures went down. Here's what I'm getting at, because I'm about to tell you something groundbreaking. Now, after a trillion dollars in stimulus just got shoved over to here, the administration wants to do what next? Infrastructure. I'm seeing between two and four trillion dollars in infrastructure. And what are they going to use to fund it? Well, I have a question for you. I saw Jerome Powell on 60 Minutes about seven months ago. I've never seen a Fed chief on 60 Minutes. But what did he say in that interview? He said, I just make money. I make it digitally. I, I kind of just hit enter and money appears. Or sometimes, he said, I print it and I send it to the Federal Reserve Banks. Can somebody explain to me, because apparently I'm an idiot, why we need to raise taxes if Jerome Powell can just hit enter and make trillions? It's a rhetorical question. Think about it. Here's what I'm getting at. I have a mastermind group. I got buddies at big places that shall remain nameless. Maybe one's on the screen, maybe not. Um, Wall Street is starting to swirl with a massive tax hike is coming. The rumor is capital gains are what right now? 20%? 40%. Personal taxes are going to increase. I don't care what you're making. Wiz, they said, if you make 200 grand or more, you're getting, your taxes are going up. Do you think when they raise taxes, corporate taxes on Amazon, that Jeff Bezos is a charity? Who pays when corporations get hit with higher taxes? You don't have to write it. You do. Here's what I'm rambling through. I am going to exit this long Amazon and long XLY. Here's the reason. And I'm going to give you, I hate rough estimates like this, but this is, this is I'm giving you the tightest that I, I, in my group of smart people. In the next, on the outside, two years, I'm going to say a year. In the next year, we will see a massive 20% correction in the market we will enter a bear market in the next year. Now I'm not, what's that guy's name? Uh, Harry Danner, I'm not some perma bear guys. I am a buy with both hands. I am telling you never in the history of markets have we had rising inflation, rising interest rates, 20 million people unemployed, massive deficit spending. I've I, I'm old enough to remember when a trillion dollars was a lot of money. Four years ago, I remember briefing Topkin Options members that China, Owned one owns one trillion dollars in our debt, and that was a national security issue. What if they picked up the phone and said, "Hey, Donald, give us our money back." Here we are, a couple years later, where we're just hitting enter and trillions. Here's what I'm getting at: I am changing my strategic mindset from cautiously bullish to absolutely bearish. Now, for the next Jerome and earnings coming up here, things will be okay. But once the details. I'm telling you, folks, when you see a headline that says Goldman Sachs clients are starting to freak out, it's they've already freaked. Massive tax increases will destroy this stock market. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the stock market is not the economy because people get confused right now. They're like, whiz, we're reopening. We've been open in Florida for eight months, but the rest of the country is reopening. The economy is doing better. I, I get it. That's the economy. Look at when the economy was awful, what the stock market was doing. The market is forward looking. I am making a prediction today that we will see a massive pullback in this market. If you, I have several buddies who manage a lot of money. Would you rather, if taxes, if we're gonna see this in 2022, would you rather get out of stuff this year for a 20% capital gain or would you hold for another year and pay 40 to Uncle Sam? It's a rhetorical question. I don't care what side of the aisle your politics are on. You love taxes. You hate taxes. I'm talking raw market. This ain't my first rodeo, folks. Here's the problem. And I, there's some good comments about like the Fed and stuff like that. Listen to me. Jerome Powell, I, you know what? I remember when Ben Bernanke under President Obama, he was testifying like on one of these days. 
he, he, it was like he was Scotty in the engine room. He's like, I'm giving you all I got, Captain. I can't give you no more, meaning I'm, I'm printing. So I call it the Fred Sanford. The Fred Sanford will happen. You know, every, I'm old enough to remember Fred Sanford, right? One, once an episode, he'd grab his chest and say, this is the big one. You know, I'm coming, Elizabeth. Lamont, you big dummy. The big one will happen when the market loses faith in the Fed's ability. And you're, you're already starting, uh, Mohammed El Arian on CNBC a couple days ago or last week, he's like, people are starting to think that the bartender's lost control and isn't strong enough to keep the drunks happy. I say this rarely, but I'm going to say it to you all. I want to be wrong. I don't want to ditch. I got what's in this portfolio. I got down here, folks. This portfolio has got $1.2 million worth of longs in here, man. Amazon, Mara, Mike, uh, Microsoft, Morgan Stanley, XLY. I want stock markets to go up. I want people to be happy. I want peace, love, and understanding. This ain't my first rodeo. I was in the board of trade when the VIX hit 90 and we had the financial crisis. I was at ground zero. And if you've known me or you followed me for a long enough time, you know this isn't, I'm not saying this lightly. So I gave you my whole, hey, let's fly out into the future thing. I'm not going out that far. I want to be wrong. News of the Biden tax increase hits the market and the market goes, eh, we're good. Fantastic. We're going to, but listen to me, even with Amazon going down or XLY going down, we can make money. Like if I don't manage these positions and get out of them on time, even if Amazon starts getting hammered, look at this. I'll sell front month calls. I'll sell at the money calls and bring in money. I'll sell bear call spreads. So as an option, as an American, here we go with Gordon Gecko and Wiz in his flight suit. As an American, as Wiz in my flight suit, I don't want this to happen. I want a 20% bear market. These Robin Hood traders who have never seen a 20% bear market have never gotten a call at 3 p.m. Like, you need to take action or we're dumping all your securities. Markets go down a hell of a lot faster than they go up. So, again, I want to be wrong, guys, but be prepared. Right. Ray, amen. Wiz, the market is not the economy and vice versa. You got it, Ray. Jason, dollar is in real trouble. Bullseye, Jason. In about a year from now, you're going to be going to the gas station with a wheelbarrow full of dollars to get gas. It's like Weimar, Germany. Um, could you do synthetic stock, sh uh, short stock with protective calls for spy in anticipation of a 20% correction? I love that question because you're smart. The answer is yes, and I can teach you uh, how to do it. That's awesome. Good for you. Very well said. Um, okay. That was a little bit of a detour, but that was a must do. I've shocked people yesterday at Topkin Options. You're looking at the only dude I sat here last January 22nd when Donald Trump looked into the camera in Davos. Remember all the beautiful people were in Davos January 22nd? And Joe Kiernan's like, final question, Mr. President, how about this this China virus thing that he's like, why are you even asking me that? It's not coming here. It's bull. Why are you wasting time? I trust you. He's a good friend. I went from the TV to my camera like this. And I said, get out, get long volatility buy puts on the S and P 500. We're going to implode. I nailed it to the day. That was also like the same day that Ray Dalios, the world's largest hedge fund manager said, what cash is trash, man. He regretted those words. Didn't he? Happy anniversary, by the way. Last March 23rd was the bottom. How did I pick the bottom? Jerome Powell. It was a Thursday morning. The weekly unemployment claims number came out and it was 6 million. I was, uh, I, I almost had tears in my eyes. I'm like, oh my God. And then I went to my computer. I'm like, I'm, this, we're going to implode even more. Breaking news, Jerome Powell drops a financial nuke. I'm like, done, bullish, and never looked back. We destroyed the so-called smart money last year, folks. I had an absolute blast. Now, just because I nailed that doesn't mean, uh, you know, my bear market prediction is going to happen. But uh, I'm telling you, folks, I, 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 you know, I had nearly 3,000 hours in the F-18. You, you feel it. You feel the airplane. You get a sense for things. And the hair on the back of my neck is standing up right now. We are already over our ski tips with valuations. These tech Tesla Tesla is worth a hundred bucks on a good day as a car company. If it's an Elon Musk play, it's maybe worth half of what it is. 
Valuations are massively stretched. FINRA came out the other day. You ready for this? FINRA, the chart of margin. Here's the financial crisis. You know how much margin debt is out there? Everybody in this market is, tri it, it, FINRA had to actually add a couple y-axis more lines because they've ne we've never seen this much margin debt. Somebody else fire in this crowded thing theater of a market, it will be an absolute stampede. Look at what happened three, four weeks ago where uh, yields kind of ticked up. People panicked. I'm telling you, man, I want to be wrong, but I'm pretty damn sure I'm going to be right. All right, let me keep these guys on uh, timeline here uh, because uh, I got a busy day as well. Solo Amazon is the name of this service. It's every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, okay? It's our newest live trade brief here at Top Gun Options. And I came up with it. I, I should pay Doc royalties because of him. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Get rid of these 33 positions. Um, our normal live trade briefs, I do them Monday through Thursday at Topkin Options. The normal ones are 167 a month because I'm talking about a lot of other stuff. This one isn't 167 a month because I'm only talking about fill in the blank Amazon and XLY, obviously. So it's only 97 bucks a month, folks. One of the things I'm doing, Told you about my foundation. I'm meeting some potential donors tonight down in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and I guarantee you a round of drinks is going to be more than 97 bucks down in Fort Lauderdale. For the price of a round of drinks in Fort Lauderdale tonight, you can get access to our solo uh, Amazon uh, service. So uh, they'll throw the link in the chat box there. It's topkinoptions.com slash solo dash Amazon uh, dash uh, monthly. Um, last year, we had a blast, like I said. That was like a hundred and... 110 grand just in uh, Amazon profits. Hey, Wiz, I work Mondays at 2 p.m. 80% of our members work. I send out a text alert and an email alert whenever I see a trade in XLY or Amazon. There's an example of a solo Amazon bull put spread back in uh, November. I just took a screenshot of it. That's what the text alert looks like. But what fires simultaneously with the text alert is an email with a screenshot of the trade buying this many contracts at this strike, selling it at this strike, this is the price. And then I also take a screenshot of the potential risk. Here's your max potential loss. Here's your max potential profit. That comes in an email. So even if you're not sitting there, you're getting it as if you're sitting there. And then about 30 minutes after the brief, I post the replay. Why 30 minutes? It takes about 30 minutes to render onto my computer and me to post it. So you know, kids go to bed or later the day, you know, flop on the couch, you can watch the replay from the brief. Now, here's the no brainer. I mean, if you can recognize this is a good deal, you're a hell of a trader. Why? If you went to my website right now and wanted to buy our primary, intermediate, and advanced workbooks, you'd pay 197 bucks. And it's well, where I go read, I read these every once in a while <laughs> to, to freshen up my knowledge. These are, these are like, going to flight school in Pensacola Naval Air Station. That's your aerodynamics, your, your meteorology, your engines. This is, this, these workbooks are fantastic. So let's do the math. It's 97 bucks a month, Wiz. Yep. The manuals are worth 197. Yep. Stay with me. You just made a hundred bucks. If you don't see that that arbitrage is pretty damn good, you got work to do. So here's what you get. Access to our solo Amazon live trade brief every Monday at two, the text and email alerts, the three skill-based manuals, and you get also get access to our ready room. What's a ready room? Folks, the ready room of a fighter squadron is where I learned to fly and fight the Hornet. You can read your manuals, you can watch the Top Gun videos, but sitting in the ready room with a cup of coffee, listening to the skipper or this guy or that, I learned more about the F-18 and dogfighting and dropping bombs in the Red Room. We have a Red Room on our Top Gun Options site. Go in there and ask questions. People, I go through there a couple times a day, but I usually don't have to answer anything because it's already answered. You have great squadron mates uh, at Top Gun Options. Uh, Parmar, 200 grand on 20 Amazon contracts, man. Nice job. Kevin, Amazon synthetic stock, late to enter, up 200%. He paid eight grand. It was up to 24 at that point. Diane, up 70 grand with one contract in Amazon. Scott, uh, Wiz, 20K uh, with two September and two October Amazon calls this week. I have never been there. Patience, persistence, thanks TGO. 
Wiz, update on my Amazon synthetic call for June 21 expiry from Solo Amazon. It's no longer up 100 grand on one contract. It's now up 127 K on one contract, my, my. Uh, if you wanna do an annual membership, I'll give you a 25% discount today. How about that? Slash solo annual, let's do that. I'll, these, uh, I love Raleigh and, and Jeanette and all the, all the folks here. So let's do that. I'll hook you up with a 25% discount. I, uh, I forgot that was in there, but there you go. There's the offer. Topkinoptions.com slash solo annual. How about that? Real quick. Speaking of Amazon, you ever notice on Amazon when you buy something and it, hey, order complete, it says, hey, they also bought, do me a favor. Full throttle training is eight sessions with me. Actually, there's one tonight at seven and our final one tomorrow, uh, Thursday night at seven. I do eight live options training things a quarter. Once a quarter, I do eight new ones. It's 195 bucks, folks. There are places that charge like five grand for that. I love it. I grab a glass of wine on Tuesdays and Thursday nights for, for four weeks. We're wrapping up, but you get access to all the replays and you'll get access to next quarter's live ones and the next quarter's after that, 195 bucks. So when it says, hey man, would you also like to take the full throttle training? Do it, do it. Okay, because uh, this is what we do. We, it, it's, we take a building block approach. Hey, what the hell, Wiz? I don't even know what an option is. Good. Se session one and two will teach you all the way up to advanced tactics like iron condors down here tonight actually you ready if you sign up you will get access to tonight because i'm doing long call diagonals and synthetic stock wow that was timed perfectly all right solo amazon newest live trading service 167 a month usually it's only 97 uh, bucks a month right there solo dash amazon dash monthly or if you want the annual just solo annual at the end of it folks if you didn't take anything away from today, first of all, I failed. But second of all, simplify your trading cockpit, even if it is, isn't coming to Topkin Options and learning about just trading Amazon or XLY. Do me a favor and just kind of do a quick debrief through your portfolio and go, do I even, am I, am I an expert in this stuff? And I'm not meaning like a thousand percent expert, but folks, I'm telling you, we had research analysts whose job was to live, eat and breathe something and they still got stuff wrong. And that was their only job in one name. How the hell can you do that with 17 different positions? Please, please, please do me a favor and simplify uh, your trading. All right, I think I have like one minute left. William, what was your Top Gun nickname, Iceman? <laughs> uh, William, my call sign was Wiz, is Wiz. And since this is a family show, uh, I will lie and tell you it's because I'm intelligent. How about that? <laughs> David, uh, what if you've never traded options? David, hopefully I just answered your question because we take that building block approach. I'll teach you what you need to know. Adrian, good question. How many texts per week? I don't know. If there's a lot going on with Amazon, there's a lot of text. If there's not, maybe there's one text with the trade on Monday. Okay, so good stuff. All right, uh, Raleigh, over to you, my friend. I, I, think I'm, uh, I think I'm good to go. Two o'clock, look at that, 1,400 right on the dot. Right on the dot, using military time. I tell you what, Matt, what a great presentation. It's delightful to have you with us, as always. And uh, really appreciated your insight and the fact that you shared with us something quite new, which is your concerns about the potential for the future, hoping it doesn't happen, but it could, and what that means. At the end of the day, though, yep. you're still with Amazon. You know how to make Correct. money with Amazon, whether it's going up or down or whatnot. You would just like, and you've got a sense about what's going to happen going forward. I, I'd prefer everything to kind of keep going up, but I'm just looking at, you know, when I when I put my out my radar in the F-18, I see a storm on the horizon and let's start kind of battening down the hatches now. It, it doesn't hurt to be prepared early. And remember, a lot of these big firms, you know, have 100,000 shares of Amazon. They're like a super tanker doing 30 knots. If they want to make an investment decision, it's like, all right, let's meet at two o'clock in the boardroom to see what, as an options trader, you know, flying a fighter jet, I can go from being bullish to bearish in the click of a mouse. So I can go from, hey, everything's great to I'm going to pound the market into the dirt in the next five minutes. So that's what's cool about being nimble and, and being a retail and, and teaching folks how to do this is we're nimble and we're not clunky and, and not maneuverable. So yeah, good stuff. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Hey, good luck with your meeting and with your, you got it. I, I mean, the charitable work that you do is incredible for vets, serious business right there. I hope you have an awesome meeting tonight. 